All right, guys, we're going to do a little bit of polygons vocabulary here. At this point, you already know the different names for all those different kinds of polygons, your nonagons, your heptagons, your dodecagons. Uh, and uh, you know a little bit about what convex and concave mean. You know the difference between a regular polygon and a polygon that's not regular. But there's a few other terms that we want to make sure that you know because you'll see they'll be very important in the formulas that you'll get to know in this unit. And the vocabulary we're going to look at today, there's five terms I want you to know by the end of this. One of them is an interior angle. You've already come across this a bit, but I want to make sure you know exactly what it is. Uh, if you think of what the opposite of an interior angle would be, then you have the second term that I want you to know, which is exterior angles. And alongside those two, we also want you to know central angles. So those are the three types of angles in terms of vocabulary that we want you to know today. But there's also two other parts of polygons that we want you to know. One of those is the radius and the other is the apothem. You can see that some people get those two confused. I want to make sure that you do not get those two confused. All right, so let's start uh, with a nice polygon that we have here. We know this is a polygon because all of its sides are straight and it's a closed figure, it's two-dimensional. So we've got a two-dimensional closed shape uh, made up of straight line segments. That means we have a polygon. So that means, well, once we're dealing with the polygon, we can start talking about interior angles. And right down there at the bottom left corner, I've drawn in an interior angle. Uh, as the name suggests, it's on the inside of the shape, which kind of makes sense. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, there's not only one interior angle here. I've got another one there. Another one there, another one there, another one there. In total, I have five interior angles, which is no coincidence because we're looking at a pentagon here. Now, pentagon's got five sides, and the way interior angles work is that however many sides you have, you have the same number of interior angles. In this case, because it's a regular pentagon, which means that all of its sides are the same and all of its angles are the same, it's got to be true that all of its interior angles are congruent to each other. That's part of what makes it regular. You could have a, a pentagon like we'll see in a second that would have all five sides the same but not have all five angles the same. It would not be regular. But in, in, in a regular polygon, all the interior angles are definitely congruent. Uh, also, uh, as I just mentioned, the number of interior angles has got to be the same as the number of sides. And that's true for all polygons, not just regular ones. Uh, if you look at this guy here, he, well, first off, let's, let's say to ourselves, is this actually a polygon? Well, it turns out it is. Yes, it's a closed shape. Uh, it looks a little stranger than the one we were just looking at. Uh, and all of its sides are straight lines and it's uh, two dimensional. So that makes it a polygon. Uh, all of its side lengths are the same. We know that's important, but in this case, that does not make it a regular polygon, even if all of its sides are the same, because it's got to have all the interior angles the same, which this guy doesn't. That's why it looks so strange, right? That's why he's not a regular polygon. And in fact, uh, you saw this uh, yesterday, a special word you would have for this type of polygon is that he's a concave polygon. And the thing specifically that makes that true, and the reason why I'm bringing it up now, is because the thing that makes him concave relates to interior angles. You see this angle right here in the middle, it's more than 180 degrees. Whenever you have an interior angle that's more than 180 degrees, you know that you're dealing with a concave polygon. But even though he's concave and not regular, not all fancy like uh, that pentagon we were just looking at, it's still true that the number of interior angles is the same as the number of sides. Now let's let's go back to our regular pentagon here, a nice tidy pentagon, and we'll figure out what an exterior angle is. We just saw the interior angle was on the inside. Makes sense. An exterior angle is on the outside. But before I draw it in, I want to make sure you guys understand that an exterior angle is only part of an outside angle. Right? What you do is you take one of the sides of the polygon at a vertex and you extend it like that and you just extend it further. You can do that in your head. You can do it by drawing a line and the angle that that extended line makes with the side is your exterior angle. So right there, you see it doesn't go all the way around the corner there. It's just a uh, part of it. That is your exterior angle. Now you might look at that and say, well, uh, I'm, I don't know why you would know to draw the side that way. Couldn't I have drawn the side the other way? How do I know which way I'm supposed to draw it? Well, it turns out it doesn't matter which way you extend the side of the polygon. Like if you extend it downwards, it's going to be fine, right? Because the angle that you get there is going to be the same as the angle we drew first. 
because of the property that you guys saw last year of vertically opposite angles, both of those angles are exactly the same. So the exterior angle won't change depending on which way you extend it. And you'll see that the formulas that we use want you to use either one or the other. It doesn't matter which way you extend it as long as you only extend it once. And that angle you'll use just once. Now, again, when we get to formulas, you'll see why that's significant. Now again, I want to point out the exterior angle is just part of the outside. It's not the same thing as a reflex angle. right? If I, I'll show you over here on the right. A reflex angle would be going all the way around like that. See, that's more than 180 degrees. And you'll see that reflex angles, we don't actually use them much in our calculations for polygons, in our formulas for polygons. There's ways you can use them in problems, right? Like I might ask you, okay, well, if that reflex angle is uh, 100, sorry, uh, 236 degrees, can you calculate for me? what the interior angle would be that's, that goes along with it. But other than that, you're not going to run into too many questions involving reflex angles. Now, I, we've talked about interior angles. We've talked about exterior angles. The one type of angle we have left is the central angle. And uh, if I say central angle, hopefully, I know it's been a while, but hopefully that'll ring some bells because the, the idea of a central angle, we've actually already talked about this year right? We've talked about it in the context of a circle. If I showed you a circle and I asked you to illustrate for me what a central angle would look like in a circle, you might remember your definitions from circles and you might remember that the central angle in a circle is just the angle formed between two radii, two radiuses in a circle, right? A radius goes from the center to the periphery of the circle, to the actual circle of the circle, and uh, the angle it formed between these two radiuses is your central angle, like this guy right here. That's your central angle. Well, it turns out that really the central angle in a, in a polygon is the same thing, if you understand your, your vocabulary for a polygon, right? If you take this pentagon here, and you were to say to yourself, uh, I'm trying to find uh, this definition that comes from circles, an angle formed between two radii, uh, then, well, I don't see a circle here. There's not much I can do. Um, well, let's let's shrink this down a little bit, give us a little more space to work. If you were to draw a circle that would go through all the vertices of this polygon, now it's a regular polygon, so you're going to be able to do that. It's not every polygon that allows you to draw a circle that goes through all the vertices. But for a regular polygon, you can. If you draw a circle that goes through them, then the radius of that circle that goes through all the vertices is the radius of your polygon. I didn't quite draw it very well here, but I think you get the idea. So this radius right here of that circle that goes through all the corners, uh, all the vertices of the polygon, that is the radius of your polygon. Okay, uh, And so if you say to yourself, well, if uh, the definition of a central angle that we're using here is an angle formed between two neighboring radii, then let me just have a, another radius nearby so it has a neighbor. And then the angle between those two is your central angle. Now notice there is a slight difference between the definition for a circle, uh, central angle, and the central angle of a polygon, right? A central angle for a circle is just any angle between two radii. You can pick any two you want. For a polygon, they've got to be neighboring radii. So they've got to be a line from the center of the polygon to one of the vertices, and then you've got to draw another uh, radius from the center to a neighboring vertex, vertex to get something you can put a central angle on. So there is your central angle for a uh, polygon. Okay, so we've talked about interior angles, exterior angles, and central angles. And we just talked about what the radius of a polygon is. So of the five things that I said we were going to look at today, there's only one that's left, an apothem. Apothem, that's a weird word. Probably haven't heard it too much if you've ever heard it in the past. Uh, some people pronounce it apothem. I like calling it apothem because it helps me remember what it is. Uh, and the reason why that's true is because it's easy to confuse an apothem with the radius. Uh, the radius we just saw before, right? That's a line that goes from the center of the polygon to one vertex of the polygon. That is your radius. An apothem isn't that, right? You see this guy here from the center to a vertex. If you have your polygon sitting on one of its flat sides, that radius is going off diagonally, right? Well, the reason why I like pronouncing it apothem is because it kind of reminds me of this guy. Uh, I don't know if many of you could identify what that is. That is an opossum, 
Right? This one's awake, which typically they're not. Opossums tend to sleep, I think, something like 22 out of 24 hours a day. They're very sleepy guys. Uh, and since they sleep all the time, they like to try and sleep in safe spaces where it's difficult to find them and eat them. So often they'll sleep hanging upside down from a branch. And when they're sleeping and hanging straight down, notice how his nose is pointing straight down to the ground. An opossum acts just the way an opossum does. So here, unlike this radius, which is going off diagonally, an apothem would actually hang straight down from the center to the edge, like that. That is what an apothem is. And since it hangs straight down to the side like that, it's going to form a 90 degree angle with the side. Every apothem always hits a side of the shape at a 90 degree angle. So keep in mind, it drops straight from the center to the side. It's going to be shorter than a radius, right? Because the radius, that diagonal there, has got to be longer than the apothem. And you might notice that uh, if you were to put that radius back in there, that might remind you of something we saw earlier in the year where we were dealing with right angle triangles. The apothem here is acting like a leg of that right angle triangle you're seeing there. And the radius is acting like a hypotenuse. So keep in mind, the apothem is the leg and the radius is the hypotenuse. The apothem drops straight down just like an opossum, whereas the radius goes to a corner because the corners are all on that circle that you draw around the shape. Now, I've talked about the uh, apothem dropping straight down like an opossum. You guys understand that's just a way to help remember that that's what the apothem is. You can have an apothem that doesn't drop straight down, right? As long as it's going from the center of the polygon straight to uh, one of the sides, the middle of one of the sides of your regular polygon, you are dealing with an apothem. It's just easier to remember it as something that's hanging straight down because it's sleeping. It's, uh, it's easy to get an apothem and a radius confused. And you'll see that in the formulas we'll be using, an apothem in this unit is actually much more important than the radius. Right? When we were looking at circles, radius was very, very important property of a circle, whereas in polygons, an apothem is going to be more useful when we talk about area. All right, so let's do a little review with a different shape. This, as you'll recognize, is a hexagon. And so we had five things we wanted to keep track of. I think the first one was an interior angle. I know, interior angle, That's maybe that's a little too easy because interior suggests that it's got to be on the inside, right? That's just an angle on the inside of one of the vertices, like that. Uh, maybe if I show you something and ask you to try and tell me what it's called, that might be more of a challenge, like this here. This one's actually a little tricky. If it were dropping straight down to the bottom side, you might instantly know it. Maybe it took you a millionth of a second to sort this one out. But this guy is an apothem. That's right. Okay, so we've got an interior angle, an apothem that's two out of five. Uh, what about, what would this be over here? Uh, is the like a outside uh, extendo angle? What is that thing? It's Well, it is on the outside. It's, it's on the exterior of the shape. That is indeed an exterior angle. Okay, we got three down. Uh, and we've only got two left. This one here, he goes from the center of the polygon out to one of the vertices, uh, just like he would if there was a circle going all the way around the hexagon, because this guy is a radius. That's right. Uh, the last one we're missing, we could really only draw in here if we had another radius to work with, a neighboring radius to that guy. And then we could draw a little angle in there and that would be a central angle because it's an angle between two neighboring radii.